Welcome back to Doing Business in Rwanda. Government's Vision 2020 is expected to drive economic transformation, support innovation, improve service delivery and increase employment. As part of this strategy, government initiated the Financial Sector Development Program six years ago, establishing a comprehensive policy framework and detailed action plan for developing the financial sector. The financial sector development program has resulted in a massive increase in savings and credit cooperatives with over 400 licenses recently granted. Microfinance institutions have also expanded rapidly, though many still don't have the capacity to finance themselves, develop new products and expand their reach to rural clients. When you look at uh, the consumer uh, banking sector, uh, a lot of people uh, who are now working uh, and who obviously want to develop themselves in terms of acquiring houses, in terms of uh, acquiring plots to construct, uh, and even uh, for their own consumption uh, at home, uh, a lot of that is actually being financed uh, by the banks. Um, actually, in retail uh, banking, uh, we, we grew significantly, almost by 100% uh, last year, which again is just an indication of the role uh, that financial services uh, plays in actually helping to grow the economy. The law on credit information uh, system uh, and uh, it makes it mandatory for financial sector to, to share credit information with us uh, and uh, it makes it also mandatory for, for the lending institutions to use the, uh, to use the data from, from credit information uh, or from credit reference bureau. Uh, uh, and uh, most of the financial institutions are mandatory participants to the Credit Reference Bureau. Uh, we've got banks, we've got microfinance institutions, we've got insurance companies, all those are mandatory participants. So they share information with us and they, uh, and, uh, they use our system in their uh, loan appraisal processes. As I said, a strong growth of the economy creates a strong growth of demands of the companies, the SMEs in Rwanda. So there's a strong growth for lending, there's a strong growth for payment systems, there's a strong growth for modernization of payment systems to make also the process more smooth and to allow the people of Rwanda to, to make use of automated payment systems like mobile banking, like uh, cards, uh, like ATMs, etc. Rwanda's financial markets are relatively new, with locals able to trade in foreign exchange, commodities and equities. The stock market was relaunched in January 2011 and currently only has four listed companies. It was previously known as the Rwanda over-the-counter market that started in 2008 with a bond listing of Bank Kamashi Rwanda. As much as we have a young capital market, it's a very effective instrument for uh, raising capital and helping businesses and farms expand their plans uh, because um, we've seen um, the leading bank here has been able to uh, expand their capital base by 25% through the, the stock market and of course the first IPO as um, mentioned earlier was uh, substantially um, oversubscribed. A combination of regional, international and local investors drive the market. Now in terms of volumes, 2011 um, you'll think about uh, Kenya is way above with the Nairobi Stock Exchange at $918 million. When you come to the other stock exchanges, you'll have Tanzania at about $39 million, trading volumes over a year. Uh, and then thereafter, you'll have Uganda at about uh, $16 million uh, over the year. But interestingly, um, Rwanda has just two stocks, but with those two stocks, it's at $47 million. The current business environment in Rwanda is due to uh, specifically the legal framework that exists, uh, two, the macroeconomic stability, and the third one uh, is the, the fact that Confidence is built uh, uh, around the leadership that exists uh, in this country. The leadership that uh, provides a vision, leadership that delivers on the stated vision, uh, and as, as a result, people uh, uh, find it favorable 
to, uh, to invest in Rwanda. In order to ensure stability of financial markets and promote good governance, government has disclosed a wide range of information that helps investors assess the quality of a financial institution's portfolios and the institution's exposure to risk. The stock exchanges and the capital markets in the region have got to harmonize um, some um, disclosure standards and also uh, to harmonize the, the listings rules so that any company in East Africa can access one, two, more or all of the capital markets in the region. That is one. And so here we are talking about cross-border listings and ultimately cross-border trading, free flow of capital among the East African community countries. And uh, this would be um, very important because uh, first, the investors in the region will have an opportunity to diversify their investments. Uh, secondly, it will also um, inject some competition which is healthy among firms in terms of raising capital and therefore uh, we would get uh, the pricing of assets being um, very efficient because of the bigger market. When there is confidence, that also uh, helps investors in other economic uh, sectors to increase their investments. And also, because of such transactions, uh, the stock exchange provides liquidity in the market. And as a result, other sectors of the economy also have a chance to access liquidity. Number two is that most investors who bring money into the economy sometimes don't get exactly what they want. For example, in terms of volumes. So the excess amount of money tends to remain in the economy, awaiting other opportunities. As a result, the money, of course, is accessed by other uh, players in the economy. It's, it's the political stability of the country uh, that allows the two stocks uh, to flourish. Um, you talk of uh, Bralira and Bank of Kigali. Um, and then secondly, it's, it's the economic management um, you know, of the country. Uh, think about it this way, if, if, if because of the global shocks um, you know, that, that uh, hit uh, the global market in 2010, 2011, with the different debt crises in, 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 in the US and in, in, uh, in, in the UK, um, here's a country that's able to manage the inflation in single digits when everybody around them you know has inflation of double digits you know you know what Uganda went to 27 percent uh, Rwanda is just 8.3 8 percent at the most so so people have the confidence that the Rwandese government must be doing something right about managing their economy with lending rates still high, credit remains limited to a small number of sectors including trade, tourism, property development and manufacturing, an indication that government needs to play a leading role in putting reforms in place that promote a conducive and stable macroeconomy. For example, government put up a program of setting up savings and uh, uh, credit cooperatives across the country, what, which we call the circles, mainly circles. And we are working with the government as central bank to ensure stability of these circles and growth of these circles. And this has made a tremendous uh, improvement in the lives of the people, but also helping to build the financial sector as well. So th that's how we do it. Then the other is encouraging the competition within the sector by bringing new products, uh, new products in terms of lending, in terms of uh, savings, and in terms of uh, uh, payment system, so this helps uh, to grow the financial sector. We are looking at economic transformation as one of the big pillars that is really going to grow and where we see the role of the private sector investment exceeding that of the government by the year 2016. So there is work to be done in that area to make sure that it contributes to the big uh, transformation. But also we are looking at the rural development and the rural development is one that is going to have real impact. You remember in the last um, uh, household survey uh, that was published last year, it really indicated that the poverty levels were coming down. Uh, if you see 2006, they were at 57 uh, percent. They came down to 44.9 percent, almost 45 percent. But then if you also look at the, at the uh, extreme poverty levels, uh, it came down from 36 percent to 24 percent. 
And we also saw that whatever the growth that is growing, we have to make sure it is well distributed. And that's why we look at the income distribution. The Gini coefficients came down from 0.52 uh, to 0.49, which is showing that actually the growth and the reduction in poverty is having an impact on the lower end of, the, of our population, uh, which is quite significant. And in this case with the EDPRS2, uh, that's why we also included, rather than just programs, we included skills development for productivity. Whether it is agriculture productivity, whether it's non-agriculture uh, or off-farm jobs to be created, especially with a focus uh, on uh, youth employment. That way, if we develop the skills across the board in all the sectors, it's going to have a significant contribution in the implementation of the programs within the uh, rural development and also for economic transformation.